So here's the story for today. About a month ago, I was minding my own business, as I often do, because that's the best thing you could do, is just mind your own business. And there I was, and I got a notification on Facebook that I had been tagged. Wow, hey. That I had been tagged uh, in a post by a friend. And, uh, I've been tagged in a post by a friend, and it was a uh, for sale post um, for a yellow US 90 out near Pittsburgh area. So I, it had only been up for about 10 minutes. So I, the, the person posting was the son of the owner. He, uh, he left his number, the father's number. So I called the father right away. And the father informed me that he already had somebody on his way to uh, come up with the machine. I didn't know at the time if it was a, a 1970 or a 1971. I needed a 1970 summer yellow US 90. And so I said, well, I'm very interested. If something falls through, uh, let me know. I'm not going to you know, try to offer more or jump the line or anything like that. And he said, yep, no problem. Nice guy. Hung up the phone, figured that was the last time I was ever going to hear from that guy. Two days later, the next day, home in my driveway, and uh, my phone rings, and I, I didn't recognize the number because the day before when I called it, I dialed the number so fast, I didn't really commit it to memory, so I answered it. And it was uh, my friend George from near Pittsburgh, and he was calling me back because the guy that was coming to look at that machine flaked out. And he gave him a day to figure himself out, and he never, never called, never answered the phone. And he was calling me back because I expressed interest. And I called him right away. We'll finish the story here in a minute. Because that machine is on the back of my buddy's truck. And he's pulling in right now. Well, here it is. As it turns out, I was telling the story about how this all happened. As it turned out, the, uh, the gentleman checked the VIN number for me. And as you can see, it's a US 91266627. But the 12 uh, tells me that this is a 71, which reminds me I misspoke in, the, uh, in my other video. I said I needed a 70, but I needed a 71. 10 is typically the uh, denotation for. 1970. One one and above is, is generally accepted as 1971. So this fit the bill for what I was looking for. It's not perfect by any stretch, but it's got balloon tires on it. These actually are not the correct balloon tires. These, this would be the correct front. Atsu Whammy Last. These I believe came on an Argo. So first order of business will be to get this kind of up off the ground and let those tires shape up. Did you look in the tank? This is my buddy Mike. Mike has enabled my addiction a number of times now. This might be the last time, but we'll find out. So use your Firestone. The seat cleaned up nice. Is it hard? Not really, no. Crunchy right there. There's the metal behind it. So, need some love. Need a grab bar. Don't know if she runs or not. Wires are hanging out. He says it's got good compression. We always like what the seller says. We always take that for gospel. Yeah, carb clean. Well, we'll get her off and then uh, we'll get some better video in a second. Okay, Mike had to go. He was in a hurry. He's my good buddy. He lives about four hours away and has brought me machines um, from time to time that he has, he's the one that notifies me of them and kind of gets himself into a situation where then I now want the machine and he's close to it, so he's helped me out. But we uh, we unloaded it, we put some air in this front tire and the, uh, the valve stems for these are way inside the hub and uh, that, that valve stem is leaking out around the valve stem so the tire might actually be it's good. 
question will be, can I get a, a better valve stem in there? The recoil, I it was not bolted on, and I wound it back up, but there is no springiness to it, so it is, is either heavily gummed up or has been put back together uh, incorrectly. There's a proper way to wind those. I know there's a number of videos that show that. Maybe I'll show that. There's no grab bar. I don't know where that went. There's no tool kit that was missing. Um, those, these tabs, I don't know if any of you guys knew this, but this tab and this tab are what would hold the optional air pump. That's where those go. Motor's dirty. There is corrosion. Yeah, to recap that story, the guy called me back. I told him to take a picture of the VIN for me and send it to me. And if it was a 71, I wanted it. This, uh, this machine was $800 as it sits. And it was worth that to me. I think it's worth it for sure. But it was worth that because uh, I needed that year. This was one of the last ones I needed. And he sent me a picture about an hour later and there was uh, the, the correct VIN. So I said, I want it 100%. And we worked out details. So my buddy Mike, I'd picked up an old uh, Nighthawk for him. So he grabbed that from me. I gave him the money, and he uh, he drove down into Pennsylvania to pick it up for me. The tank. I don't know if I can get the camera in there. That's about typical. It's a decent-looking tank. On the inside, I don't know what this discoloration is. We'll try to get that out. It looks like it's just a staining, some rust. The throttle is gone. Mm, that switch doesn't want to move. I noticed the, the gear select didn't want to move, so this thing needs some love. If you look, it might be hard to see without the fenders on it. The uh, this rear tire sticks out a lot more. That's because he's got all one side tires on for the for what the, the Argo that these would have come off uh, come off. If I could speak, that would be outstanding. So this tire sticks out further because the offset is the same as this, but he's got them in reverse, so it looks funny. I have other tires that I might be able to uh, mix and match and make it look not silly like that. And that's what we'll do. But I think to end this video, we'll just take a walk in my other room and show how all the blanks get filled in. This is a 1970 Parrot Green US 90. I got this for free, but uh, it looked a lot worse than this. <laughs> it looks pretty bad now. That is a, uh, a reproduction seat from Mike Pomgren at Vintage Motorsports, vintagemotorsports.net. Uh, that's just sitting on there. It's not bolted. I don't know that I'll put that on this machine. I might save that for a nicer machine, but that front tire I got from my buddy Brad Rye at Trike Fest last year. Trike Fest is coming up. It's really too nice of a tire for this machine, but it helped me get this one rolling. Those are some 250X rear tires. I put adapters on the back. It was only after I got the adapters on that I went to roll this and I realized the axle is locked up. If I had to guess, I bet it's the, uh, the brake drum. It's all locked up. So that one needs a little love. I will get to that. Show you the rest. This is the front tire that came with that machine needs air it's been it's been patched right here does it hold air I don't know we can find out really quick No. It's 
splitting right there. See the dry rot. <sighs> well, now we know. Knowing's half the battle. That's what they say in GI Joe. So that other machine would look like this if it were a whole lot nicer. This is the one I picked up a few months ago from my friend Ben in Pennsylvania. It's a 1970. And we can tell that from the VIN. GC is one zero. This is also a 1970 bright red was the proper name for this color. This came from my friend's collection, not far away. Another beautiful machine. This is a 72 Tahitian Red. I think this is the third one I got. But nice machine, so this was the second generation, two colors that year. I'll do a video of the US 90s when I can get them all out and line them up. This is the first one I got. Aquarius Blue. I was at a 4th of July party when I learned of the existence of this. I was talking to a distant cousin and he we were talking about three-wheelers because, you know, what else is there to talk about? And he mentioned that a mutual friend of ours had a blue three-wheeler. And I said, really? Like dark blue or kind of lighter blue? He goes, you know, one of those with the balloon tires on it. I said, really? So within the month, I was over in that guy's driveway looking this thing over and and brought it home. So that was the first one. The green one we just looked at in the other room uh, also kind of came through that guy that was owned by another mutual friend who said, if I wanted it, I could have it. And I said, that is great. I do want it. I shall have it. So this is another parrot green 1971. Call this one Little Andy. That one uh, came from a friend, Andy, in, where are you, Andy? Are you Ohio? I think you're in Ohio. And uh, I agreed to buy this last year at Trike Fest. We did a deal uh, sometime around October, I guess, and it finally got picked up and brought to me around January. This guy I traded to, uh, I traded a 1985 ATC 70 for this. Those are incorrect rear fenders. Uh, the tires leak down a little bit. I've not heard it run. The recoil, I need the piece that engages that. I have one, I just gotta put it all together. Uh, this one's nice, incorrect rear fenders. So I, I uh, have another set I'm gonna put on it that will make that right. But that is a 19, 71. This is a 73. I'm bumping into a machine as I go backwards. This is not the same generation that we're talking about. I'm going to move on. That's a 78. This guy is a 1970. Uh, picked this up at Trike Fest. I bought it the fall before and through some mutual friends it got delivered to me at Trike Fest. Doesn't have the correct front fender. But those rear fenders, I think I'll stick on that that one. Maybe give them a fresh paint job first. But this one is going to turn into a blue US 90 because I don't have a blue 1970 US 90. I bought blue fenders from Mike Pomgren. And I gotta have that tank painted, those forks painted, and the front of the frame painted to match. And I will turn this into a blue one and I have some tires that I can put on it to make it look the part. This one is, uh, what year is this one? I forget which one's which. I think this is a 73. My buddy, uh, my buddy Derek snagged this one for me. Found, got the lead on it, picked it up for me, and I picked it up from him. He lives about an hour away. He's a big hoarder now. This is a 1974 that I got kind of locally, 30 minutes away. Sat up on a shelf in a friend's collection and finally he let me buy it. And that's a 72 Mighty Green. 
So the green of the second generation is mighty green. This is Daytona orange. Kind of getting into more about these than I intended to, but that right there is all the, the 90s, one of each color. So four the first year, four the second year, that's eight. Two and two is 12. And then the uh, 1974 is 13, lucky number 13. Now we've got one of each. So yeah, I got into a little bit more than, uh, than I thought I would on these 90s, but I'll save, uh, I'll save some information for a, a formal video. We'll get them out and do some side-by-sides, compare, contrast, and uh, show you all the differences on another, another time, but just excited to have them all here. I've officially picked my uh, front lawn photo shoot date, so that'll be happening sometime in August got some work to do between now and then so thankfully I have lots and lots of spare time where I, I don't know what to do with myself so I should be able to crank out a bunch of work and uh, make all that happen or I may be uh, being a little dishonest I record with a gimbal which sometimes is a little funny That's all for me. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Uh, if you did enjoy this, please subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to get my numbers up. Uh, make sure you uh, set your notifications. So click the little bell to get the newest videos as they are recorded. And uh, like this video, please. Thank you so much. Have a great day and uh, happy Memorial Day. Thank you to all those who pay the ultimate sacrifice. And uh, we celebrate them this weekend. Thank you.